welcome to Main Event Pong Presents Books and Booze with Banshee and Deeks. Today we have two very, very special guest stars, Der Wolfie and Mackie the Shy. Uh, today's a very special episode for me. Remember uh, in the last episode I said November is all about things that Banshee loves. And today we are um, reviewing one of my all-time favorite novels, The Thief of Always by Clive Barker. I love, I, words can't even tell you how much I love this book. So if you if you haven't read this book, you should definitely go out and grab it. Um, the first line of the book is, uh, the great gray beast February has swallowed Harvey Swick um, whole. So we are drinking a drink that I'm calling the gray beast, which is basically a gray goose uh, martini. Before we get into anything, books and booze and bit with Banshee style, we, um, we like to start off with a shot. This is not Grey Goose. <laughs> it's rum. Because we're not, um, Just, it's rum. Yeah. Not that that makes it much better, but. Well, because everyone knows that Martinez is all vodka, and you can see how much this is. Yeah. These are big. Yeah. Ooh. It's good, though. Ugh. It's too strong. It's like diamond tap. <laughs> are you uh, chasing it with the martini? Well, I'm mm. going to take a sip first of this. Mm. <laughs> it's not as bad as that. It's not as bad as that blackberry brandy when it comes to cough syrup. Nothing as bad as that. Okay. Rictus. Why would you cheers that? Why would I cheers? I, it's actually good though. This is for the fish children. You'll get it in a second. I thought you would cheers jive. <laughs> jive. Is, that, is that supposed to be racist? <laughs> yeah, it is. is <laughs> jive. Banshee is actually a really big horror fan. Um, I love horror movies. Uh, Clive Barker is one of my favorite horror, mov horror movie makers. I love Hellraiser. What? <laughs> I, I love Hellraiser. I love Nightbreed. Why are you acting like you didn't know this about me? Have you no, seen I my know. horror mini fucking collection I enjoy out there? Nightbreed, but I saw Hellraiser as an adult like a few years ago, and I don't get it. I fucking I love, it. It. I a, love that that's weird. That's I a, love that shit. That's weird. I love that shit. I love Hellraiser. Um, I read this thing one time that was like, if you're afraid of um, Chucky, what you're really afraid of. If you're afraid of Freddy Krueger, what you're really afraid of. And Sweet they were like, if you're afraid of Hel uh, Pinhead and Hellraiser, what you're really afraid of is sex. I don't know if that's true or not. Yeah, you're Bondage, <laughs> no, but I just, I just read that. But like, yeah, it was like, or like, I don't know, you're religious and like, you think it's a sin, like you're afraid of sinning or something like that. So you're afraid of office space now? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I love all things, you know, horror, and Clive Barker is one of my favorites. Um, dude is a master. He's like a writer, a director, an artist. We're all wearing actually our shirts we made. These are all um, illustrations, illustrations from, the book. from the book. Yes, by Clive Barker. Um, so if you read the book, you also get some visuals, some really, really good art in there. And so that's one of the reasons I love this so much. It's uh, middle grade, so I feel like it is more of a. What do you feel like? Do you feel it? Does it feel like a middle grade book to you or no? It doesn't yeah, feel it's young adult to me. <laughs> it's a little older. It's, than it's, adult, it's, I feel like, even though there's no like bad words or, or yeah. in, like inclinations of sex, it's a little dark. Yeah, if I was, yeah. you know, middle grade, yeah. I might be a little scared. Yeah, no, but, but, it, but you, it wasn't green eggs and ham. That's yeah. for sure. I mean, no, but there, like kids can handle dark stuff. Yeah. But I think the way it was resolved was something a way a younger little kid would do it, as opposed to yeah. a violent yeah. teenager. Yeah. I, I think there are there are. It's kind of like when you watch. Uh, um, certain movies as a kid and then you rewatch them later and like holy shit that's what happened like for me when I watched Dirty Dancing as a kid I did not get the whole abortion aspect of it I really didn't I just was like hey there's some people dancing and these these two people one's rich and one's poor whatever and then later in life I'm like oh the motherfucker this shit's about abortion you know what I mean like that's whatever that's right yeah but so no she's legal I thought she's not no, legal no she's legal baby's like 17 but anyway so like <laughs> that's kind of what I get here is there there are things that I feel like it could appeal to children but yeah. then as an adult I get undertones of things that I wouldn't have necessarily caught when was the first time you, know, you read it? I think I was like 14 oh, okay. yeah, yeah so I that read made, it okay, yeah, that makes exactly. sense I was yeah. like, I read I'm for, thinking middle school and I'm thinking like yeah. 11 and I think like when I forget yeah. between 11 and 14 I was like I'm like but I think an 11 year old could read this book yeah. and enjoy it yeah. we think yeah. Yeah. Well, if, if they enjoy Potter I don't see why not well, yeah. well Potter's not I don't know it's not I dark. I don't really see. Remember, yeah. I don't I haven't really read any part of yeah. it. Yeah. Mm. But what little kid doesn't watch the Twilight Zone marathon yeah. like but New Year's Eve and Thanksgiving? See, oh, but I think yeah. if people think 
I do that now. But see, but I think it's because it's written by Clive Barker, who does Hellraiser. People are going to think, oh, that's a children's book? Because, yeah. Well, the one scene, he does R-rated horror movies. Yeah. Know? The so one part in there that I was actually caught myself actually breathing heavier than I normally would was the vampire scene. Yeah. I actually was nervous. Which, oh, if you would have did something? Yeah, like yeah. A little, as, as far as being a little kid, I don't know how I would have handled it as 12-year-old David, like but adult David tricks, was like... Yeah. What's about to happen right here? So before we get into that, let's get into a little synopsis. So you got basically a synopsis of the book. You got Harvey Swick. He's a kid. Um, It's February. So he is, it's in between Christmas and summer. And he is just bored. At the end of the day, he's just a normal kid, filling filling normal back to school blues. And he's bored. He meets a guy named Rectus. Rictus says, you want to go on an adventure with me? Rule is you can't ask questions, you know, just come with me. We're going to have fun. So he goes with Rictus, travels, travels a little bit of a ways, arrives at a house. Um, House looks gorgeous right away. Architecture looks amazing. Grass looks amazing. Everything. Gets into the house, immediately is fed. You know, it seems like it's, um, they call it the holiday house, right, at first. Mm -hmm. So they call it the holiday house. Um, and immediately all sorts of cool things are happening. It's fun. They're like, do you guys, do you want to stay? Harvey's like, I don't know. I got to ask my parents. They let him call his parents. His parents say it's fine. They, they said they planned it. Yeah. yeah. They, the parents say, oh, we planned it. We knew you deserved yeah. it. Go ahead and go, you know, enjoy yourself. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about school. We've taken care of everything. Yeah. So he's like, cool. I'll stay here. So he stays there, meets another kid named Wendell, meets another kid named um, Lulu. Lulu. Yeah. Meets an old woman named Mrs. Griffin who cooks for them, who has a couple cats. Um, Three. Three. Turns out um, all kinds of fun costumes and toys for them to play with. Um, and they can eat whatever they want. It's like being on, it's like, I don't know, it's like being in Willy Wonka's chocolate factory it, or something. But it's yeah. kind of an acid trip version. Yeah, yeah totally. Because like, one thing that, well, going back to Rictus though, Rictus is not a human. Yeah. Nah. Yeah. He so, looks like a wild it's, mouth, yeah. kind of like a Cheshire it's, it's cat. It's not so thing. much yeah, like frog, it's not like so Pleasure much. Island in Pinocchio. Really? Yeah. It's more like you're yeah. going to your grandparents and they just let you do anything. Yeah, yeah. it's well, like no, because seriously. They, they, not not yeah. to cut you off because they at first it seems like not a lot of magic, yeah. and then all of a sudden mm-hmm. the magic picks up a whole lot. Yep. So it is Grandma's house at first, and then all of a sudden they remember there's monkeys and mm-hmm. on the yep. tree, and yeah. there's you know That's soldiers fighting in the field. The way Harvey just kind of goes for it, even though everybody everything. You know, Rick is not is like some demon-looking thing, and mm-hmm. uh, and never and you know, eventually yeah, he comes his brother's flying, death. The little dude comes flying into your bedroom. Yeah. So okay, like, buddy, I'll go with you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, but I'm going back to people saying, is this a children's book? Yeah, yeah. It's like, well, it's weird. I just kind of give the the fantasy elements right in your face, and the ten-year-old doesn't even pay attention to it, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Like he doesn't even seem suspicious that this weird-looking creature is at my windowsill, or you know, he just yeah. It's like, okay, I'll follow you anywhere. Yeah. Well, I kind of feel like all of Clive Barker's books are about desire, Mm -hmm. and this one is more, it's still about desire, honestly. It's just more of like a, like the difference between an adult's desire and a child's desire. It's so out of left field. Say an interesting character just came to you one day and said, come with me on a journey. Like, whether you think it's an alien or some magical being, yeah. you're like, this is something different. Why not? I yeah. would go! That shit doesn't <laughs> happen! You gotta go! Oh my god! Why not? Dude, anybody. I'm, like, so into that stuff. Like, there's a freaking, you know, a door to a room in my in my wardrobe or into a Narnia. I'd go, dude. I'd See, go anywhere. Is this where race plays, plays a factor? Because you wouldn't like, go oh, nowhere? I'm good. I'm good. I gotta go to work tomorrow. I'm fine. You're a yeah, ten year old kid. Really? You're a ten year old black kid. Work tomorrow. Hold <laughs> a ten year old black kid. My mom's gonna beat my ass if I leave. <laughs> right, I gotta be back. By, I gotta be back. But I gotta be back before the course lights come on. That's probably and I'd be like, yeah, what? So I can't well, it go. beats I gotta go to work tomorrow. <laughs> well, if I was a little kid, I'd be like, no, nah, I can't go. I gotta be back. Like for me, lesson. I would do it, but that phone call with my parents would be with my boss instead. Yeah, I'd, I'd probably, I'd probably, <laughs> I'd probably like, okay. worry about getting in trouble. And my boss is cool, peace. You know but what see, I mean? But like, the, but at the same time, remember he was. He couldn't be too inquisitive because script is saying, "Hey, that's you one can question. You can't ask any questions. Yeah. Okay, you got one question, no and questions. That, that's two questions." Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So he kind of had he had to go in blind. Is anybody you know? feeling this already? Yeah, dude, this shit this is pure, all booze. Yeah. Look at how much this is. My nose just got a little bit of olive juice. Yeah, like real warm, real quick. Olive juice. And we took a shot. It feels good. Olive juice. Son. So olive some strange shit better. starts to happen. Um, it starts to unroll out. Hey, what's going on? You know, 
more and more magic starts popping up, some of it good, some of it bad. For example, um, it's Christmas morning. You know, they say, ask, ask for a present. And Harvey tries to check the house. He's like, okay, this one I'm gonna ask for. I'm gonna ask for a very specific toy that I had when I was a child and lost. It's an ark and all the animals are very specific. There's no way unless he finds this one specific one that he could get it for me. He goes to sleep, wakes up, guess what? Is there. there. Yeah. The specific item was he had like the two elephants, one had mm. blue eyes, and the other one had green because his dad ran out of blue paint, so he painted the other one green. Did you, mm -hmm. say, you said it was an arc, right? Yeah, yeah no, an arc. Like Noah's Ark. Yeah, yeah Noah's Ark. Yeah. The fact that Harvey asked for that arc to begin with, to me right away says he's he's already coming, he's already smarter than the other kids that are there. He's already forming conclusions like, this shit ain't right. You know what I mean? Something, something's going on here. I think he's still enjoying it, having fun, but I think that's the point in the book where he's like, something is not adding up. Well, unlike all the other children, I, want, I feel like he's the only one that's kind of like, I'm not going to be here long. Yeah. Whereas Window is kind of like, who cares? Whatever. This is so but, fun, but, life yeah, sucks. No, but like far. Rick just said, oh yeah, you can stay as long as you want or as little as you want. But he's like the yeah. only one that actually... Yeah. But he feels like he's not going like to take him up on that. Yeah. Yeah. But like that's he's what, gonna yeah. Yeah. But that's he, what sets him up as the protagonist of the story anyway, because he's like the first, he's the different one. Yeah. You know? But I can tell he already feels trapped. Well, that, no, that that comes as a kid, like, yeah. whether you're going to a magical place or down to the mall, like, there are rules, he's, he's remembering yeah. landmarks about, okay, case so I have to leave this crazy guy, I don't yeah. know if he's going to try to rape me or something, you know? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> rape by Richter's. Wow. Hey, as a little kid, my mom said, if any grown man tries to put his dick in your mouth, you bite it off. <laughs> your mom said that? Your mom that told you that? Yeah. <laughs> Great parents. <laughs> you it fight for your life, you're going to end up dead. Did she use the word dick? My mom, no. My mother, yeah, probably. My, my mom mother was not Yeah, you're all, yeah, she probably yeah. did wow. use the word okay. dick. So going forth, um, you start start getting more and more glimpses into magic. At one point, Harvey overhears Wendell talking shit. What did he hear him being like, oh, go for Harvey? Like, was it Karna? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it was Harvey. It was, it was, no, it was Harvey. It was when he was a vampire. Oh, Harvey yeah. was a vampire, yeah. And he didn't no, know but he was before the that, before that, didn't he hear something else no, that no, made no. him want to scare no. Wendell? Oh, what, Wendell, what Wendell scared him. Wendell yeah, set him Wendell up. set him up yeah, to yeah, get scared. Up. That's right. Oh, by the hanging pumpkin. Yeah, yeah, he's, yeah. he set him up with the hanging pumpkin On to Halloween. get scared, yeah. and then Harvey wanted to get him back. So. Um, and that's when Jive gets in his. And then when he, he, like, he meets, like, yeah. he meets Mar and Jive. Hey, well, why don't you why don't you dress like a vampire and scare Wendell? Mar and Jive are two of Rictus's brothers. Yeah, and they make him into this thing right here, which is like a real vampire, and basically try to convince him to kill Wendell. And <laughs> almost does it. And, and it's Wendell, almost worked. fearful for his life, not knowing that it was Harvey who was the vampire, says, oh, go eat Harvey instead. Yeah. He's better. And then that's the scene where they're trying to turn him to the dark side, saying, look at him, he's, he's serving you up on a platter. Kill him. Yeah. And then... We actually got a little nervous. Yeah. 33, he thought he was going to do it. 33-year-old David got a little scared, a little nervous at this little... Because this happened to him Because of this... <laughs> one time. So, yeah, that's, that's why I'm still thinking this... That one part was probably more adult than the rest of the Yeah. Movie. Remembers the time his friend Der Wolfie turned yep. into a werewolf for Halloween and tried to bite him. That this dude was still me on the heartbeat. Hey, yo, Dave is fat and no, full of meat. He wouldn't. Go get him. Yeah. Would you? I don't think you would. Nah, I think he might. So that's when he's like, okay, something's not right here. I'm going to try to leave. Um, some other stuff goes down. Um, Lulu starts acting real weird and yeah. depressed. Even though she was weird from the start. But yeah, yeah, she was weird from the start. Right away, she, she didn't want to like eat. the Luna Lofgood of the story. That's the one thing also, too. But that, I didn't yeah. see enough of Lulu. Lulu is like his love interest, kind of. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. More than no, more than yeah. anything. And there's not enough of Lulu. There's no... I, I, I feel it's, like uh, this... It's him and Wendell. I don't well, feel like this is a love... It's not a love story. It's I mean. not. It is, but it isn't. I feel like everything that Clive Barker writes is very romantic. And I feel like this book is romantic, but not necessarily in a romantic love type of way. It's romantic it's, between him and Wendell. No. What? Yeah. No. He's it's like, he's like. only stuck with Wendell. Like, he wishes there was somebody else he could yeah. hang out with. Like, hey, I want to go swimming. We can't. I don't want to do that. Yeah. He just wants to eat yeah. and be a little dick. I feel like and so much the, of the story was romance. About yeah. Okay. Hear me out. Wendell should be Lulu. That's I feel I like the romance is between Harvey and his youth, and he's at a transitional period mm -hmm. in his life where he has to grow up, and he is kind of growing up in yeah. this book. Well, I he, don't know. That's how I feel. I feel like it's um, it's a it's like because yeah, exactly. at the end of the book, I mean, just to fast forward a little bit, it's time. Like the guy in the book is stealing time from people, um, and to me, 
I feel like that is what the whole book is. The whole point of the book is that I feel like we all feel like responsibility is the stealer of time. I don't know. Hold on. But did anybody else like you guys read this when yeah. you were young? But when well, I did. They I just was, read it like I'm the only one who read it when I was young. Yeah. Like when when he saw his old parents, like you know, like he went back to his life and his parents were old. Didn't you get that whole uh, click? Remember the movie Click? Like you're like, oh, you gotta get enjoy every that. moment. Yeah. Like I feel yeah. like this is like what Click got their yeah. idea from. Probably. Yeah. I haven't seen that, but yeah. Yeah, but, yeah, but the conflict. But it was, yeah. I don't think it was romantic. Like. His central conflict wasn't how to get the girl in this movie, yeah. That I get, yeah. but, but this, you always still get the girl. Like, okay, well, he's you don't always old. still get the girl. Yeah. But it's weird because they introduce her as a love interest, and no, then she's not. No, here's the yeah. point. It's, it's, That's what this movie think, she, No, she's there, so he goes back. If you, if you didn't care about anyone else, like, you're, like you yeah. feel bad for the other kids, be like, I'm safe. Sorry, yeah. I'm alive. I can't go back. I'm sorry. But he's like, he felt for... Yeah, he saved well, the boy, but he knew someone else was still there. Well, going no, to turn the that, but also, yeah. but I get also, that, but I think still he not felt like he could get his time back, and he wanted his time back with his parents yeah. too. I just would have everything would have been perfect except for there should have been like if they were to make a movie of this, which I know they will. They're Dude, going they to boost Lulu up. I, I don't know. If they I, haven't made it in the past twenty some years. My Parker is really weird. I'll bet you ten years. It's the solution. Ten years. I give it ten well, years, he, 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 especially he, after Perigrams. Mm -hmm. I give you ten years. But it didn't do well. It didn't do well. I was telling um, when I was explaining to Derv Wolfie, um, like kind of what the <laughs> book is like. I kind of said Monster House. Um, Very much like Monster. House. I was lot. thinking that's what I was thinking. I, of they when, were, I saw when, it, when the trailer, when I, I haven't seen it. Monster House either. But when the trailer came out, I was like, "What the fuck? They rip off the Thief of Always." And then I tried to Google and see if it was under a different name, The Thief of Always, but it wasn't. The thing about Monster House, it has nothing to do, it's not giving you yeah. gifts, but the boy mm -hmm. is very much... Um, Harvey. Harvey. Mm -hmm. So, I have it. I'll let you borrow it. But it's very much... Mm -hmm. I thought the exact same thing. Yeah. Even though the story is totally different, I thought yeah. the exact same thing. It's not and free on Netflix? I think it's on Netflix. It probably... It it, pieces of it did kind of remind me of Perry Grinds, or Miss Perry Grinds kind of reminded me of this, rather. Um, and there were other things that kind of reminded me of, too. Um... Little, little pieces of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, um, little pieces of, I mean, just a lot of different stories, but I feel like it's kind of like trippy. It's trippy, but like it gives you that nice childhood feel. That's what's yeah. it, it, it's, it's got the hero adventure thing that all 10 year olds are going to go for. You know? Yeah. Yeah. You know, Very goosebumpy. You know, he's naive. Yeah. You know, he's a naive character when the story begins and then he toughens up as the story goes along mm -hmm. and, and he becomes loyal to, you know. Like we said, when, we, when he goes back to try to save Lulu, mm -hmm. you know, he has that sense of kinship and loyalty with her. And, That's the thing. Like I feel like it, it has like you have the the elderly woman making you all the food. Like it's mm -hmm. you're at grandma's house and like camping in the backyards an adventure. Like you're 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 safe. But then you have the the lake with the fish and how it's bad. Mm -hmm. Like that's the realization of like, wait a minute, maybe this place isn't yeah. Some, yeah. something's yeah. wrong here. Now, what do you guys think about Rictus, Jive, Karna, and Mar? Do you think they were once kids? I don't know. No, they were dust. They came out of. They were because they they, cause they emphasize that a lot that yeah. they came from nothing. Dirt. Yeah, who's the one that... Like, they came from dust and decay yeah. and, and whatever. So he, did, he did somebody to go into the world yeah. for him. I, I forget. I who, feel like... Oh, mm, sorry. Go Which ahead. one was eating and then the dust and died because of... Jive, died. Jive, yeah. Yeah. Jive, yeah. yeah. I don't know, but I feel like it's weird. Like, I guess there's all these clothes and stuff from previous kids, yet the only ones you see... I mean, They fish, all become fish. They don't all... Do you think they all become fish? Or they get eaten? Well, because I feel like Griffin is different. Well, she was because the first. she made that wish. Yeah, her wish would never first. die. I don't know. I just feel like was the first. I just feel like we yeah. don't actually know. We assume all the the kids are fish because Lulu turned into was turning into a fish, but I don't necessarily think that maybe that's how every yeah. single thing happened because there's a lot of those yeah. up well, there. That's just me. No, because you know what I'm saying? Well, he had the gatekeepers. Like you know, yeah. I, I found it interesting that there's four. Cause there's always a coalition yeah. of four. So I'm, the first thing I thought when he said there's four, I thought four horsemen. Yeah, I thought that too. So I mean, they try to run away yeah. and then they get killed. So of course, there's probably kids who died trying yeah. to get out. You know, yeah. that's mm -hmm. what I think. Because they never explain that. Because I mean, they make it mm -hmm. sound like the reason why Lulu was turning into the fish is because she went chasing after the ark at the bottom of the lake, right? Mm -hmm. So, but. The, but how and she's getting, she how she's getting really so somber, cool yeah. you feel like fish. if you've been there long enough, it just drains you. Like if you're beyond yeah, your it, realm yeah. in the real world, you're going to start... Because I did it to Griffin, yeah. did it to yeah, Lulu's like, don't look at me, I'm just over mm -hmm. it. You know? 
I'm like super drunk, so like. Oh, really? I'm like, I'm like super drunk. Everybody. Pretty super drunk? So yeah, this is, shit. So it's pretty strong. Character. Just look where I'm at. All right, okay, you want to talk about favorite characters? Yes, favorite You go character. first, yeah. Maggie. Mm. He's like, martinis. My favorite character yeah. says, Ma Turner's. <laughs> It's hard not for me that he's not. It's hard not for me to say hard because he, he was the most it's exposed okay character. He was fine. the most exposed We've character. Main character yeah, he, he, he's, he's the, he had the biggest role. He had the most to say. Mm -hmm. It can't be Wendell because that guy was like Mr. Wendell. So you say Harvey. Harvey, I kind of like Rictus because I don't know. Yeah, Rictus, too. Rictus is fun that. as fuck. Yeah, why are you taking? Why you, why you taking? I say Rictus. It's alright. We, we, all can, have, we can all have the same. But to me, Harvey huh. is my favorite character. When I was reading the book, oh, yeah. I yeah. imagine Rictus kind of as like a little Barney Fife with like yeah. a weird yeah. goblin yeah. smile. He's like a to me, he's like a demon Yoda or something. Cat yeah, yeah. on like a yeah. little no, frail no, body. Yeah. Because here's the thing: he's the only one like. I'm, I read it myself when I'm reading. He's the only one where his dialogue's up. I'm like reading in some sinister voice. To <laughs> I love yeah. that. Yeah. No, but you, like, you decided to come back. <laughs> I love you that. Know, like, Can you read to me like yeah, that, yeah. But then, yeah, I was like, I thought he was Barney Five, yeah. but then when yeah. Jai was there, I thought Scatman and Crothers. Like, I was like, I can totally see him. From The Shining, you can totally know that is. Yeah. yeah. The one that Jack Nicholson just impales the shit out of. Yeah. So, all right, so my favorite character. <laughs> It's Rictus. Even though I don't really go for villains like that, yeah. I saw him as the, and this is going to sound weird, something as a cross between like a big, huge, scary smile and the frog from the WB. Don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why. Because he's like, hello, my brother. Oh, yeah. Shit. Yeah. Well, that's, 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 yeah, see? that's old school. Well, that's probably so, where the Cheshire Cat thing with that. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but I think Rictus has, out of all the yeah. characters besides the main character, he has the most depth. Because yeah. the only one that has a lot of depth is Wendell, but he's a little punk, so you don't really and, like him. And he doesn't really have depth, he's just a white. Uh, yeah, he's just a whiny little just, punk just kid. Pug, I always said pug, a bad word. Just a puggy little kid who just eats a lot and. Yeah. Don't, uh, who cares? Who cares? I don't like I'm that. I'm dumb and I like it. You know? But Rick, this <laughs> actually has, like, out of like all the Rick four little Wendell. horse demons or whatever, he's the only one that has, like, a magic power orb. That if his master dies, he'll still live on. Yeah, he wants he has, to branch out. He's yeah. got to be a servant the whole time. He has ambition. So, like, I would love, yeah. like, he yeah. has his own story and he can be his own bad guy. I like yeah. him. The most, so he's probably my favorite. But I like that. He doesn't want to have his impress. Yeah. He's like, You'll yeah. be my lap dog. Yeah. And he like, dog. Yeah. And he even I, says, Come here, lap dog. Yeah. Come, come here. sit on my lap. Come, come salute the. Come on, <laughs> oh, oh, shit. Sit right yeah. down. He's, he's there. And again, he's, he's like, he's, like, like no, he, he's, uh, he's Star Scream, you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm the new leader of the Decepticons. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Galvatron. I was just kidding. <laughs> so that's, that's two for Rictus, so we'll see what, what these guys say. I say Rictus, yeah. Oh, snap. Three for Rictus. He, he had the biggest role. I mean, the, the house is just that. It's like the haunted house just under the face. Of he's, the, yeah. he's the only one that can last outside of the, the house world. Like you saw what happened to that one. It's just yeah. like a few seconds. Oh shit! Yeah, he got fucking mangled next to Blue Jack. Well, there's still Harvey and Luna. And Har Harvey's, and my no, yeah. Harvey's my favorite character. No, we have villain. Harvey's my favorite character. Like I said, I just think he's he's got balls. Mm -hmm. I think he is. I think he's enough of a kid for me to believe him as a kid. But then I feel like he has redeeming qualities too, and I feel like. He, like you guys said, he didn't have to go back. He yeah. went back. Um, I don't think I would have went and back. And the way he tried, I, the clever way he tried to trick, you know, Hood, like, oh, he's not going to be able to give me this art. You know, things yeah. like that. Just different things that he does, I just think are so pimp. I don't know. It's just, but that, he real, just comes real, off as oh, pimp oh, as fuck quick, to yeah. me. Real quick to interrupt, you guys would have went back. Because when I was reading it, I would have been like, I'm going to make things worse. But Maybe I shouldn't go no, back. That's the he thing. cared about Lulu. That's what thing. You had to have Lulu. He wasn't sure he was going to be able to reverse time. Yeah. You don't know. Once the essence is sucked away, yeah. you weren't sure if you are going to revert it. But he wanted to say save her at least, you know? But, but that's right. the problem. They didn't build that love interest enough. It doesn't have to be it a love interest. It's a care for another person. If you, if you, if you, if you, if you are a prisoner, if you got taken prisoner, yeah. you were in someone's basement, yeah. and there was two other people with you, whether or not you wanted to stick it to yeah. them, you would try to get if, them if out too. If I thought too. I could Just save Angie being, here, I'd go them. back. I mean, oh. different. But I'm not married to her, but I'm not dating her. Oh, I love you! Oh, Banshee's a fish. Too bad. Maggie Shine would me. You have your own self-preservation, but you can't knowingly let them but get fucked over. But as a 10-year-old yeah. kid, you'd be like, well, I'm just going to make things worse. It's time. Maybe I know but the rules we, of time we, travel. We talked about this already. But he's just going to make things worse. Is he still 10 when he, gets to, when he gets back to his No, life? yeah. He's he, still 10. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, we know this now? Or is that we, we, you know, well, I mean, bro. maybe mentally he might well, not. Because mentally he's a, it's a big thing. Because yeah. there's a big, obviously yeah. there's a big change that's between. The, that's the weird thing that still is yeah. in Because yeah. Yeah, like, he acts different. You can distinctively read see, the difference in this character. See, that's one thing I, I credit Barker for. It's that, it's like, life. it's like he changed the narrative yeah, and, you, and, and seamlessly. To yeah. where you, you don't even go, wait, when did he become 30? You don't care. No, because no. Yeah. Yeah. Like he went, he yeah. saw his parents, he was still a little kid. But Lulu's like, I can't leave now. Yeah. I've, or the, the uh, what's the, 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 the woman's name? Okay, Griffin. Miss Griffin. 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 She knew she couldn't leave because it's been too fucking yeah. long. She yeah. would be poof. Yeah. Yeah. Bitch was old as fuck. <laughs> old as dirt. Old as <laughs> She like, looked like. Oh. Wow. <laughs> she was just a crip creeper, <laughs> but like with boobs. She was Dr. Sears. like female. Mm hmm. She, she served up some good dust yeah. though. I, I always thought she was a. What's interesting about her is you, you read the way she's written up, and you and you swear she's a bad guy. Yeah. Like the, you know what? I Paris? thought she was a bad guy yeah. too. I thought sorry. she was Mr. She's, Hood at first. Yeah, you, but you think she's Mama Fratelli or something? Just the evil boo, you know, Rick ancient Dis- boo. I thought Rick and Dis- she's actually was a Mr. sweet Hood old lady. At first, uh, but then he turned out no, Rick Dis was Mr. Hood. I thought yeah. he was really in charge, like at one point. But you know what I really thought when yeah. he they first saw the winged bat. And then he became a vampire. I was waiting for some crazy time travel. Like that was he you might the whole be time. Mr. Hood yeah, yeah. Thing. I yeah, really I thought that for a second. And Barker's capable of that. We know that. Much. Yeah, I really thought. That. All right. Well, let's rate the book first. Dear Wolfie. What do we rate it on? Like, one to five. One to five. Good. Good reads. One to five. I would say three point seven five. It's pretty awesome. It's quite <laughs> like. Yeah. No, like. Can we go to decimals real? like that? <laughs> for real? <laughs> oh, you do that all the time. You, you don't like decimals. Three point eight two. Yeah. All right, I'll give it a four. I'll give, I'll give it a yeah, four because that point five. But are you three and a half? No, I'll go four. Like, you you know, it's definitely a young adult book. Like, but it's still enjoyable as an adult. Like, the the characters are cool. Clive Barker does create these worlds that you're like, wait a minute, is this for a kid or an adult? He's got that mentality, you know. But I enjoyed it. I'm glad I read it. I'm, gl- I'm sorry I didn't read it as a, a 13 year old boy because I, I probably would have loved it too. Uh, yeah, I was about to say that. So yeah, uh, I'm gonna. I see he has a few other books. I'll probably check them out. Come um, on. All of his other books are very different, except for Abra. What's the Just heart? Warning. The heart. Uh, there's something like the Hellbound Heart. The Hellbound the heart, heart is yeah. what Hellraiser is based on. Uh, Cabal is what. Um, <laughs> Cabal is what. Um, what's it called? Nightbreed. Nightbreed. Cabal you is said what. said that's like one of your favorites. Yeah, Nightbreed. I just couldn't I'll think. It just didn't come to my head. Cabal is what Nightbreed is based on. Anyways, um, I give it a five. I, this is only the second book on this show I've given a perfect score to. The first one was Shadow and Bone. So um, it's definitely, like I said, I it's, it must be a matter of preference to me, but it is one of my all-time favorite books. Nothing gives me a feeling. It's, um, it's the only book this year that I have picked up and didn't put down until it was done. Yeah. It is the only book this year that I did not take at least one break. Even Harry Potter and the Cursed Child I took one break from. So, And I had been waiting for that book. You know, I loved Harry Potter. You guys know how it is. Yeah. Um, so it is the only book this year that I, you know, and I this was, you know, probably like the eighth time I've read it or something. But it's the only one I picked up, read until yeah. it was over, and then put it down. So it is, it, to me, it's just a great book. It's a book that you could read with the whole family. Um, it's got it, things things a kid could love, things an adult could love. There are horror elements in it. There are fantasy elements in it. You know, there, there are romance el- elements in it. There's this one fucking quote that I love. You guys know oh, yeah, Banshee loves her quotes. Quote, yeah. You know Banshee loves her quotes. Banshee. Hey, I opened quotes. this, I opened this video with a quote. By the way, DZ's done with martini first, I'm just saying. You want oh, some of mine? No. I'm not used no. to martinis. I've never had them before, so I'm taking my time. Yeah, I could barely see straight. It's more my, olives. So, I know, I was hoping it was more olives. There's so many in the jar. Here, you want mine? Yeah. I'm going to read you a couple close quotes before we go. Oh, hey, dude. What's the one? <laughs> oh, but that hand. Here. Time would be precious from now on. It would tick by, of course, as it always had. But wow. Harvey... <laughs> not while I'm reading. Sorry. <laughs> Time would be precious from now on. Yeah. It would tick by, of course, as it always had. But Harvey was determined he wouldn't waste it with sighs and complaints. He'd fill every moment with the seasons he'd found in his heart. Hopes like birds on a spring branch, happiness like a warm summer sun, magic like the rising mists of autumn, and best of all, love. Love enough for the thousand Christmases. Christmases. Yep. Here's my all-time line. favorite quote. Maybe from anything, but from this book. And this is from Mrs. Griffin to Harvey. 
wherever I go, I will speak of you with love. Yep. I just love that. I don't know, there's so That's many. Kimberly Richter's one of them. Yeah, I freaking highlighted so many different things in this book. I could like, it's like half the book. It's like that episode of Pete and Pete where she's like, hey, do you want to borrow my book? I highlighted everything important. And it's like every single page. <laughs> it's every single word on every page. I think of back to school when I think about highlighting pages. Yeah. It's like, they've already been. They've and already he's been... like, I'll use my own book. <laughs> yeah, you know, back to school where he's like, they've already been read. They've already been outlined. Yeah. yeah, but the last guy who read it was probably a maniac. <laughs> so I give it a Kids five. New books. <laughs> I give it a five. It's a perfect book to me. I wouldn't change one word in this book. Uh, Shine? Mackie Shine? Oh, uh, yeah. You know what? I was thinking about this. I was going to give it a four plus something. I, I got to go with five, too. I'll tell you why. Oh. That's because my boy. this is probably the first book that I've read three times in my life. Mm -hmm. I've enjoyed it all three times. I find something new every time I read it. Mm -hmm. So that that's an uptick on points. Mm -hmm. It's the kind of it's one of the books I've read where I go, please make a movie. Oh god. It it, it has But to they be need to let me cast it. They need to like involve me. <laughs> so yeah, so I wanted I wanted it as a movie. I've read it three times. I had no problem diving Make Harvey Sorry, Black. I've, I've had no problem I, I give this book a three. Uh, <laughs> I Make Harvey like, Hawaiian. Yeah. I give this movie. A, you can't get a seven. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do you want? What do you, what do you want, Make Harvey? Harvey a I girl. Want some Make Harvey a girl. Just I want hula skirts for Christmas. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, but um. <laughs> Is that what you wanted for Christmas? Can I get some spam? I, 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 want, I want some girl. Mr. Hood, can I get some spam? <laughs> I want a girl in a hula skirt. I can eat some spam for. Never mind. Okay. Whoa. The book was mentioned to me when I was twenty. Like I said, twenty-seven, and I. By me. I, right. You knew me when we were uh, 27? No, I thought I had you. I told you to read it. <laughs> no, no, I told, I told you I already liked the book. And when you said we got to read Thief of Always, I was like, oh, I've read that. It's awesome. <laughs> so it, it was an awesome book, you know, and you know, I, I like that it appeals to pretty much different ages. Right now. And He's what not. And um, so I'm going to move on, but yeah, I give it a five. You know, Catcher in the Rise is my favorite book, and this is probably right Catcher up there. Catcher in the Rise is a good book. Yeah, bing, bing, bing. And this one gets a five for me. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Um. So I gotta to rate this book. I can't rate it as Old Man David. I gotta go into Old Man River. Is Old Man David cynical or what's up? I don't know. It's, uh -huh. But but if I go back to young, know. not even to preteen David, yeah. it's definitely a five out of five. Uh, third, uh, twelve year old David would have loved this book. I didn't even know this book existed until Banshee uh, told me about it. So. It's a great book. Um, if you guys are kids or you got any kids at home, it's just imaginative enough to keep their attention and dark enough to keep it exciting. So it's a great read. Um, you know, I don't know. It's fantasy. It's supernatural. You know, and it's smart. So check it out. So I give it a five out of five. I'm waiting for the movie. There, there will be a movie. I give it ten. You years. think he's trying to appease me? No, I didn't know we could rate it like we were a thirteen-year-old. If you're a thirteen-year-old, I, I had, probably would have loved the shit out of it. Yeah, yeah, I had. Okay. I don't know if I would have read it if I was yeah, thirteen. I had, I had to do that. I would, I would, all I did was read it. I enjoyed it. Like the one thing I kind of ticked back on was the end. I was like, this like kid's a little times. too good now. Like, Wait, what's up? Like, well, he, he became prejudice, too like perfect. Well, yeah, for that, me and, 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 but if I was a kid, I'd be like, yeah, do it. That's why I have to change it because what. And though David is like, okay, so when did he grow a backbone all yeah. of a sudden? But, see, I, but as I, Kid I, David, I, it, it reads like a goosebump book. Yeah, when he turns he's 30, a hero, all of a sudden, he, oh, he's, oh, he's oh, a gangster. Yeah, go ahead. That's what I like about the book. Uh, I said, as a narrative, yeah. you would you would like it for a certain reason as a 13-year-old. And as a 39-year-old, you like it for a different reason. I am not 39. I'm 39! <laughs> oh, I'm He's 39! He's almost 30! And now that you said this. that, you made it seem like 39 is bad, my and therefore is, you've insulted him. Yeah, not at all. That's my, yeah, yeah. That's my boy. Right? When I was 13, I was doing those choose-your-own-adventures. I yeah. want to be 39 no, when is, I grow up. Not, there's a lot of books out there where, kind of like movies, where you can watch it as a kid and you watch it as an adult, it's different. And yeah. In a bad way. This was similarly appealing, I think. Up and Spoke was one of those movies. Yeah, because yeah, because five year olds yes. would appreciate up and smoke. <laughs> I saw what I was five. Five Barker needs I, to make I, a return to directing, and he needs to make a movie. Yeah. And he needs to call me for casting decisions. I'd be like, "What do you think, Megan?" Who I'm drunk. What's, what's his name again? Uh, uh, no, who's uh, Edward Suzanne? Johnny, Johnny Depp. Depp. No, no, Tim, Tim Burton. Okay, yeah, Tim Burton. Thank you. So I'm kind of drunk. So as long as I don't Tim want Burton, this movie to look like Beetlejuice. Oh, Clive Barker needs. 
leads to make the movie. Either, either Clyde Barker, Tim Burton, Tim Burton or uh, what's his name, Del Toro. Del Toro. Oh, Any one of those three will kill this. That and make it a would great be movie. Not, not if it's so like, not if it's specific Rimish, but I mean, because starring Adam Devine. It's Divine, movies and it's not good. Benicio Del Toro is Rictus. Yes! No! No! <laughs> they'll be like, they'll be like, Puffy, you could, Doug Jones you is Karna! Doug Jones is Karna. Right? He can't even talk. Exactly! <laughs> Doug Jones doesn't need to Fine. talk. Fine, Bill Nye is Karna. I don't know. Or is that Rick Yes! The resurrected course of Barney Five. Don Knotts is dead. <laughs> Rick this should be. Daryl from The Walking Dead. No. Why would it be Norman Reedus? Because he's thin. I don't know. Oh, it's, I don't, no, I'll, you know. They have to be you, British, I feel you like. You know they're going to CGI the fuck out of those characters if they make yeah, a movie. Yeah, that's but true. You know it. You Who's know? British? Who could be Rictus? Rictus who does, who, who does a... Who uh, does Newt's Commander. Newt's Commander. Who, who, Eddie who Redmayne. Eddie Redmayne. Who's that? The what? guy from Fantastic Beasts. Who was oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's the Danish girl. I'm thinking there of that. The guy from the space movie. Oh Who, yeah, he was uh, Jupiter Ascending. Yeah, yeah. That was a, okay. That's uh, <laughs> Ju Jupiter Ascending. My Channing Tatum is hardly sweet. Jupiter Ascending. That movie was so bad. That would be hot, but not fitting. It'll, it'll make two hundred million dollars. That movie's so movie. bad and all ancient alieny, but that movie is so bad. It's so bad. So thank you for joining us on Books and Booze with Banshee and Dees. Um, stay tuned. We're a couple weeks from now. We're gonna be doing a, a new book, uh, one of Deez's favorite books. Yes. Remember, I told you um, December. So oh thank you. We hope you like the book. Read it. Like, share, subscribe. Um, if you like Clive Barker, uh, talk about what you like about him in the comments. Uh, anybody have anything else they want to say? Goodbye. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Goodbye, nice well, everybody. You guys had that one point. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we did, but we don't have any more. That's a good that one. That was from that Artesian collection, remember? That's a Why does James Bond, James Bond love this shit? <laughs> <laughs> oh, are you going to down it? Yeah. Like a gentleman no, with not. your pinky out, though. With your pinky out. Oh! Oh! Yeah! Look who has hair on his balls, ladies and gentlemen. Pop the top. Bring it up. I don't have hair on my balls, and I finish mine. <laughs>